Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. My guest today is Dr. Selen Haukip, spokesperson of the Cookie National Organization. The Cookie National Organization is the apex body of 17 rebel groups, Cookie rebel groups. There is another apex body that is the United People's Front that has eight constituent units. And together, the 25 constituent units signed a suspension of operation agreement with the government of India, the government of Manipur in 2008. So it was a tripartite agreement that was signed in 2008. Welcome to Northeast Live, Dr. Salen Hauke. Uh, good evening, Mr. Wasbir. Thank you for the opportunity to be engaging with you, uh, Northeast Live, at this time. It's a pleasant evening, and our topic should also become pleasant as we go. Thank you. Please. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Now, uh, is it okay to call KNO a constituent unit of 17 rebel groups? Uh, yes, at the outset, I'd like to make a small clarification in that uh, description. Um, you use the term rebel. And I also, at one point, maybe that's the colloquial term used generally in certain circumstances, but I happened to use that uh, at a meeting in Delhi at North Block with the former um, Joint Secretary of Northeast, and he took exception to the term rebel. And I was taken aback a little bit, and he explained, you are not rebels. You are fighting for your constitutional rights, albeit armed owing to unfortunate local circumstances. So I thought we should set that point clear uh, so that people don't get this misgivings of who you're talking to. We are Indian nationals, citizens of the state of Manipur, citizens of the world, and we like to engage with you uh, for a very, uh, you know, um, fruitful Absolutely. conversation. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Haukip, you know, uh, we all know about the protest that was organized in the hill districts, mainly Churachanpur, Tengnopal and other areas yesterday, that is on Friday, <clears throat> that eventually turned violent. That protest was organized by indigenous tribal, for, uh, indigenous, I, uh, indigenous tribal leaders forum. Yeah, absolutely. That was organized. We are talking about the protest that was organized by the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum. Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum is also a constituent apex body. Of, there are several constituents. It was a peaceful protest. I understand there was a directive by the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum that no rebel group, if I am again using the word rebel group, no group that is under the suspension of operation or neither any elected representative, they should not associate or they should not be a party to this but at the end of the day the situation turned violent so what was the cause of this uh, protest what was the trigger of this violence and what what was the protest all about for the sake of my viewers please okay to begin with the purpose of the pro uh, not silent but peaceful part uh, to uh, um, to, to air their grievances in the state of Manipur relates to uh, issues related to uh, forests, you know, uh, protected lands, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, evictions of people in that area, etc. And uh, from the uh, point of view of the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum, the government of Manipur has not uh, followed proper procedure in executing you know, activities related to those uh, for uh, land issues I mentioned. Now, so uh, the idea of uh, going ahead with the um, march, the peaceful march yesterday, was simply to go from point A to the uh, DC's office in certain areas and maybe to the governor of uh, the state and to the chief minister's office to submit a memorandum. So. Uh, in this connection, um, yes, the SOO groups who are currently in, engaged in political dialogue with the government of India and also the government of Manipur, it's a tripartite dialogue, um, the issue of land is it features. 
and we also discuss uh, uh, forest acts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all of us, all stakeholders, no. are party to complying with the Indian Forest Act. So the essential thing required here is that uh, government or any agency engaged in uh, carrying out, you know, any kind of activity related to uh, uh, such matters should follow proper procedures. And that was the main, the tenet of yesterday's uh, purpose of uh, the peaceful march. Right. Now, now, now the state government of Manipur is saying that these forest areas, including the wildlife sanctuaries, are being encroached upon and many of the encroachers are not Indian nationals, they are Myanmarese nationals and uh, you know, I interviewed the Chief Minister of Manipur, Mr. N. Biren Singh. I'll come to that a little later. But what the state government is saying is that these forest areas as well as the wildlife sanctuaries are being dominated and, and largely encroached. And most of the people who are encroachers, they are Myanmarese nationals. What do you have to say to that? I think uh, a simple uh, verification of what is being stated would clarify the uh, matter. Now, with regard, I'd like to cite an example, a very recent um, eviction that took place concerning K. Songzang village in Churuchanpur district. You know, this is a village which is an off offshoot subsidiary village of uh, Kungja Nao Sen village. And according to customary laws, the elder brother always, you know, at a given time would... Um, uh, transfer his younger siblings to another village within a specified area. And this specified area, uh, known as Kung Pi Nao Sen, has evidence as far as 1926. So all the villages within this area already in, in, in place in 1926 are registered. They are, they are paying legitimate hill house taxes. Now, on 20th of February, this village was, uh, you know, evicted. Uh, and uh, the following day, there are videos available of uh, those engaged in the eviction, in fact, looting the village. Gas cylinders were taken, chickens, pigs were taken. And on the day of the eviction, when kids came back from school, there was no home anymore. So uh, if this was to have been carried out properly, such eventualities could have been uh, avoided. And the fact that on record, no. the village is in existence within the area already uh, with evidence from 1926, how in uh, 20, almost, uh, you know, how many years later in 2023, uh, if you want to go back in time to verify the place, I don't know how that would be done, but proper pr procedures ev evidently were not followed. And that was the main gripe. And that was... No, no. Were there any talks earlier? You see, uh, all these groups had signed the suspension of operation in 2008, mm -hmm. that is 15 years ago. Now, in this period, I'm not, I'm talking about this, uh, this encroachment issue. Was there any dialogue between the community leaders, the local organizations and the state government authorities at any point of time? I think, you know, um, there might have been in the past, I can't draw aside an example per se at the moment, but the issue of uh, land and all these forest issues has become a, um, a major uh, issue since 2000, uh, 2022. Preceding that, we never had such uh, major, you know, uh, outbursts of situations like this. Notifications going out from the government offices, etc. This has become um, very eminent uh, since uh, 2022. And reasons, I don't know. What, what has, um, I think what you referred to, uh, you mentioned about Myanmar's nationals coming into the areas and all that. I think there is apprehension genuinely in the state among certain communities, particularly in the valley, who think that uh, people from across the border, no doubt they are of the same ethnic entity, coming in are being given shelter. You know that Islam is yeah, but, doing that. But, and, but the apprehension can be allayed by carrying out proper sort of verification to say who is here on humanitarian ground, which the government is also doing now. They're putting them in a jail to secure them, unlike uh, in Mizoram, where they're putting up 
you know, people in uh, sort of uh, areas which are humanely uh, much better off. Now, so... No, 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 but, but can you, can you, can, are you totally denying that uh, there are illegal uh, infiltrators in the sense that there are illegal migrants from Myanmar in the I hill areas? The term illegal infiltrators is a misnomer. They are okay. escaping the brutality of the military junta. The world knows about that. And the obvious course of uh, recourse for them is to come across the border where their people are. And here, there might be stray cases of people trying to stay back. However, those can be addressed by the paraphernalia we have of government to adequately address such issues. But terming them illegal immigrant is wrong. They are here on humanitarian grounds. They're escaping the atrocities in their own country. And might I add no. that these people are in Myanmar today, not by choice. You know, you know the history of the colonialists. They arbitrarily divided the country uh, according to Government of India Act 1935, where they created British India and British Burma. Now, we are not there. Our people are not there by choice. Families are divided. So if they come, no, now you yeah. see, right? I, I take that point. I take that point. And now, now, Doctor Doctor Haukip, you know, we had we had shown throughout the day yesterday. Uh, you know, you said that it was a peaceful protest, but we saw uh, cars being broken. We saw protesters pelting stones, and of course, we also saw tear gas being fired from the other side. Now, what led, what triggered this violence, actually? Who are responsible for this violence? Correct. Now, the peace march was carried out in all the districts except Chandel district. That includes all the Naga districts. Now, there was no violence in any of the districts except Kangkokpi district in north of Manipur. Now, I've seen a few video clips and whilst it was geared to be a peaceful march and it started out that way, I noticed in this video clip, a girl who wanted to participate in the march was uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, stopped by the security forces. And when she resisted, she was in public beaten. And that sparked, that made the others irate and the violence started. Now, no such thing happened in any of the other districts. The violence took place only in Kangkukwi district. Now, as to why the no. security forces, uh, you know, lashed out to that girl who was trying to join the friend, her friends in the march, it is is beyond my, uh, you know, uh, imagining. Now, you see, Doctor Haukip. Now, yesterday. Uh, I had a telephonic interview with the Chief Minister of Manipur, Mr. N. Biren Singh. He said that the local people largely were not behind this protest, that it was provoked. The, there were a lot of provocations by at least two groups which are in the suspension of operations, that is the ZRA and the KNA. Uh, and later on, the cabinet decided to revoke the suspension of operations on these two particular groups, that is the ZRA and the KNA. KNA is under the banner of your organization, which is the KNO, and ZRA is a constituent unit of the United People's Front. Now, they are saying that the ZRA leader is a Myanmar national, and the KNA leader is somebody from Nagaland who, uh, uh, who is leading the agitation. So, so, the chief minister was saying that a foreign national is provoking uh, this movement and a lot of local people were not actually participating in this particular uh, protest yesterday. Your thoughts? Okay. Uh, we need to clear that misconceived idea because the indigenous tribal leaders forum who headed the peaceful march have made a statement stating that no elected members of the assembly nor those in SOO groups should try to in any capacity in any way try to deviate uh, you know the people from carrying out their peaceful march so how can we be instigators when we are being told not to interfere so that itself explains everything and that statement is uh, uh, has been issued it's on media 
on WhatsApp, etc. Um, so, you know, that, that misconception needs to be clarified. We are not engaged in any capacity to instigate the, this peaceful uh, process. I mean, the, the very fact that it's a peaceful march, why do we need to instigate them? The people are co concerned about the incident lately of, you know, the Kong, uh, Songzang village. And mind you, as I mentioned earlier, issues of land, etc., are being discussed at the political dialogue table. Why should we need to uh, go and instigate uh, the public on this account? When was the last time that this dialogue took place? Uh, it, it has been ongoing since uh, May of 2022, and it's been off and on. And uh, a lot of them sometimes are informal. Uh, so it's, it's going on. It, it has happened in the last few so months also. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. A.K. Mishra, who is the interlocutor for the Naga Peace Talks, is also the interlocutor uh, between between your organizations and the government of India, right? Correct. He, he is not interlocutor for he is the center's representative. The term interlocutor okay, is the, in our as case. Far, okay. In your case, he is the center's representative. Yeah. Now, now, about the ZRA leader being a Myanmar national that... He, so, therefore, he's a foreign national who is leading a movement in Indian territory. To my knowledge, Mr. Thanglen Pao, leader of the ZRA, was born in a village in Churchanpur district. And as far as I know, in the course of the years, uh, he did uh, uh, live in Myanmar for some time to the extent that he became a member of parliament from the National uh, NLD. NLD. And, but after the military junta, et cetera, whatever activities in that country, at some point, uh, I understand he came back to his birthplace, which is in Churchanpur district in the state of Manipur within India. And since then, I believe he has uh, acquired Indian citizenship and he has his Aadhaar card, just like any other citizen of the country. So again, I so think that needs to be understood. Uh, now, do, are you saying that... Uh uh, Mr. Alan Pao, uh, he, 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 he definitely was an MP, member of parliament in Myanmar. Yes, yes. And he said after, after the junta resumed power, etc., he came back and he's acquired Indian citizenship. Are you saying that he has acquired Indian citizenship through the legal I process? would imagine so, although I cannot vouch for the pro processes involved, because right. uh, 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 he, he has his Aadhaar card, he has got his whatever is uh, considered valid. And to my knowledge, I mean, I haven't delved into it. It's not for me to do that. But he, he is one of our own ethnic entity. And he's uh, been in India for so long, as far as even I know, from the time that SOs were signed with uh, the army, also he was already there. So... Now, 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 you know, the, the chief minister of Manipur has also made a very significant point. He said that... Uh, there is a lobby who was interested in uh, staying in these forest areas as well as nat national parks, wildlife sanctuaries because he, he, is, he is saying, the chief minister is saying that they are cult engaged in poppy cultivation which is a huge source of income and they are engaged in the protest because the state government of Manipur has already launched a crackdown on poppy cultivation. How do you respond to that? <laughs> now, you see... I am spokesperson for the Cookie National Organization. My organization, the organization that I'm a part of, has been actively engaged in trying to discourage, uh, eradicate poppy cultivation in our areas. And uh, that was 2016. And particularly in 2022, um, our president issued an order that within 10 days, whatever is remaining needs to be demolished and videos pictures of that was taken and also sent to the government of manipur now how do you accuse us of being engaged in poppy cultivation right now 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 you see uh, whether it is nagas whether it is cookies whether it is maitais yes. uh, at the end of the day they're all uh, indian nationals they're all citizens of the state of manipur uh, now, the point is, uh, are you not in favor of a 
strong and united Manipur. The very fact that we are engaged in dialogue with the government of India and the government of Manipur is ample evidence to, you know, of our, of our, of our uh, motive. We, as you might know, are asking for political settlement or our constitutional rights to be honored. And it's to be within the framework of the constitution of India and within the state of Manipur. What more evidence do you need of our goodwill and good intentions? Now, in that case, uh, now that, you know, you see, uh, the government of Chief Minister Enbirin Singh, both in the previous regime as well as the present tenure, uh, we have heard a lot about uh, Mr. Biren Singh himself, the Chief Minister himself saying about bridging, bridging the Hill Valley divide. And there were also cabinet meetings being held in places like Chora Chanpur and uh, other hill areas. There was cabinet meeting which was not the scene in the past. Now, what is another way? What is other, what are some of the other ways of bridging this hill valley divide? Now you are saying that this protest was laid by the civil society organizations. There was no question of militants or rebels or whatever we call it being involved. Now, are the, is the KNO willing to have a dialogue with the organizations in the valley to remove some of these misconceptions as you say? Uh, sorry, please clarify which organizations from the valley? We, we are... Uh... Uh, uh, so to speak, armed organization. Do you mean our counterpart from the valley or do you mean civil society organization? Civil society. I mean civil society. Uh, would it be proper for an armed organization to be engaged with uh, civil society organizations? But, uh, but, but you, are already, you are already in dialogue with the government of India. Yeah, I only mean uh, it would be appropriate, know. but we, are, we would be willing. Yes, because our objectives are to create a better state for all of us if let, 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 let me, right better state for all of you that is your yes. objective let me let me put it in another way suppose a group of civil society organizations from the imphal valley uh, wants to have a dialogue with the kno as well as the united people front discuss this issue point blank face to face sitting across the table would you be yes, willing yes we are already in, get, engaged in, the, in that capacity with the government so why not with the uh, civil society is also i would be perfectly you know willing to i can't speak for the others no 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 dr Haukip, you see now that the state cabinet met yesterday immediately after uh, the situation went out of control in kangpokpi and they decided to revoke the suspension of operation on two groups that is the kna which is a part of your organization uh, uh, and as well as the zra now, what now? That means the KNA and the JRA are not part of the SOO anymore. Uh, so the government can pick up the JRA cadres, government can pick up and arrest I I the can, KNA cadres. I so I what is going to differ because this is the tripartite okay. arrangement the center, the state, and us. And we are all signatories to that. And any decision, okay, there can be a unilateral decision but as to how that would affect uh, uh, affect uh, uh, further uh, meetings to arrive at a logical conclusion i don't think uh, the state government pulling uh, uh, out the uh, i'm withdrawing uh, as far as the state government is concerned the kna and zra uh, i mean we, we the umbrella organizations are there kno and upf the dialogue will continue. And uh, I think at this point, I'd like to make a statement. Uh, the idea of uh, the state government holding a cabinet meeting yesterday evening post the uh, peaceful march, uh, you know, it must have been based on certain uh, sources of information that reached the Honorable Prime, uh, Home, uh, Chief Minister. And uh, I, I strongly believe there's some communication gap somewhere, some misinformation inadvertently being placed that has made the Honorable Chief Minister, you know, uh, take Since a decision. Yeah, please go ahead. No, 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 no. Now that the KNA, I'm not asking you about the ZRA because you don't represent uh, the United People's Front. I'm, let me ask you a question on the KNA. Uh, there is a lot of suspicion now that 
KNA leaders could go underground uh, and uh, you know go into hiding now that the, the SOO has been revoked. Uh, can you confirm that that is not the case and uh, they are ready for a dialogue to continue with the dialogue? See, as I stated earlier, the state government is one component of the tripartite arrangement. Now the center has right. not uh, spelt out their position on this and neither have we made any statement so far because we think the state government uh, needs to do the needful in terms of uh, what protocol would demand in the tripartite arrangement. Maybe they have to right the government of India, etc. Let the process come to its uh, you know uh, logical conclusion, and let we'll see what happens next. Absolutely. Now, 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 you know, for the sake of my viewers, now that uh, the KNO, for example, is talking to the government of India, you are engaged in a tripartite dialogue uh, post the SOO agreement. Now, now, for the sake of my viewers, what are the two to three main demands of the KNO at this point of time? Oh, we, we are asking for a territorial council, an autonomous territorial council, which exists in the state of Assam, in the state of Meghalaya, in the state of Tripura, in the state of Mizoram. Uh, you know, we are asking for a similar status. It's constitutional. In Assam as well. In Assam, in Assam as you well. You have the Bodos, you have the Kargis, you have the Dimasas. And in Manipur, we are also asking for a similar status within the state of Manipur. So this will only, from our point of view, go to develop, strengthen the state, even more than it already is. That is our objective. We are not trying to break away. If there's any apprehension of if these people are given this kind of uh, constitutional status, they would break away and go somewhere. No, Hanuman's period is over. We can't take this land anywhere. Isn't it? Right. Absolutely. Now, 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 uh, Dr. Haukip, uh, I would not lengthen uh, this conversation much longer. Uh, you know, but now the present flare-up, the latest, uh, you know, trigger is over the state government's decision to clear the forests and the, some of the wildlife sanctuaries of what they call encroachers. Now, what would be your approach? What would, what would you like to tell the state government? How should they uh, resolve this issue without a confrontation? I think on that score, we would concur with the uh, stand of the peaceful march yesterday. All they are asking for is proper procedures to be followed not only to be you know seen in writing but in action also and if that happens we are all willing to comply with the indian forest act and what what is correct what is in place should not be disturbed what is illegitimate should be addressed but how do you decide that unless you follow proper administrative procedure that would allay any you know apprehension on on, on the part of any stakeholder and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, Dr. Haukip, uh, you know, do you see that Manipur will be stronger only if the hills and the valley people they stay together in an amicable manner? Does the KNO believe in a bridging the hill valley divide? Does the KNO really believe in amity among the different communities in Manipur? Without a doubt. And I'll draw on a bit of history to substantiate that statement. You know, our forefathers, ask any elderly gentleman from the valley or the hills, they've always coexisted in cordial relationship. Now, things changed only after the colonialists came and they carried out the divide and rule. But now we are in independent India, we are all independent, and we are in a federal state, and we are part of uh, the state of Manipur, and here, any differences need to be sorted out constitutionally. And that is common for all of us. And if that is done, and due constitutional rights are respected and given to those who deserve, then what is there to be afraid of? There should be no mis I mean, apprehensions at all. Our demands are clear. The government of India knows that. The state government knows that. Maybe there are some people who are not clear of the total picture, that's something that the media could help alleviate, you know, clarify, that our demands are perfectly healthy and normal, and it will only go to, if the cookie inhabited areas are given a political status and development comes in, 
which state is going to be developed? It's the state of Manipur. We are a part of Manipur, unless they say we are not a part of Manipur, or what the conception of Manipur is. You know, we have, need to have a government that looks after the total uh, state of Manipur, irrespective of hill and valley. Here, the hill and valley divide can be, you know, bridged through proper constitutional measures. And that's what we are seeking. And that is, Finally. in my opinion, high dependable. Right. Finally, finally, uh, Dr. Haukip, will you be willing to put out an appeal for peace and non-violence in the Hill Districts to whoever they may be? Yes, and again, I'll go back to the SOO. Since SOO was signed in 2008, peace has returned in the hills of Manipur. People are buying cars, people are constructing houses, and people are moving freely. And that is the peace dividend of SOO. So to extricate certain groups from the peace process is going to be counterproductive. It, it, it defeats, contradicts the very essence of the purpose of SOO, which is to create an atmosphere conducive for political dialogue. And that is going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let us hope peace prevails not just in Manipur but across the Northeast and let us all develop together. Dr. Selen Haukip, thank you very much indeed for speaking to me in this convers exclusive conversation on Northeast Life. Thank you, Mr. Wasbir. All the best. Thank you so much.